Hey guys, today we are going to identify transformations from a given image and identify some of its key features. So let's look at this one here. It looks like I just slid it up and to the right. So this would be a translation. And let's figure out how much we translated exactly. So I'm going to choose two corresponding points. I'm going to use these two here. And from that point to that point, it looks like I went up two. And right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I knew that this was the original and this was the new one because it says that figure one is transformed to create figure two. So I went up two and right seven. So the congruence of this translation stayed the same. We did not change the size at all. The orientation of the vertices also stayed the same because I don't turn a translation at all. Same with the orientation of the figure. Okay, then it says, which rule best describes this transformation? Well, translations, we add and subtract numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate A. And I went up two, that's gonna affect the Y values. So there should be a two with the Y. And then right seven, it's gonna be a seven with the X. And up seven, sorry, up two is increasing and right seven is also increasing. So this answer would be D where we add to both the X and the Y value that shows right seven and up two. Okay, let's look at this next transformation. This one looks like a flip over a line of reflection, and it looks like the line of reflection is the x-axis. So this one is a reflection over the x-axis. Our congruence, we did not change its size at all, so it stayed the same. The orientation of the vertices, we want to check the order of the letters. So follow it counterclockwise. I go R, Q, S, T. If I do it here, I do R, S, T, Q. So the orientation of the vertices changed. And then the orientation of the figure, the way that it is facing, definitely changed as well. Okay, so now I need to identify the rule for the transformation. I'm going to go ahead and cross out C and D because those are translations. Translations are the only rules that have addition or subtraction. Now let's write out a set of corresponding pairs so we can figure out the rule. I'm going to do S and S prime. So S was at negative three, negative three. And then S prime is at negative three, three. So we can see that it is the Y values that changed signs. So the answer to this one is A, that is the rule for a reflection over the X axis. Okay, next one, I can see that I changed size. These look like similar figures. They're the same shape, but different sizes. So this is defi definitely a dilation. And we got bigger. We went from this smaller one to this bigger one. So it's an enlargement. And let's figure out what the scale factor is by looking at some points. So I'm going to use D and D prime for my corresponding points. D was at negative 4, 4. And D prime was at negative 6, 6. 
And remember we find a scale factor by doing new over original. So I'm gonna use my y values. It would be six over four, which simplifies to three over two. So this was a dilation and enlargement and our scale factor was three over two. So our congruence in this transformation changed. That's the whole point of a dilation. You change sizes so the size does not stay the same, it changed. And then our orientation stays the same for both of them in a dilation because we're not turning or flipping at all. Okay, now let's look at the rule. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cross out A and D because those are translations. In a dilation, we multiply by the scale factor and we already talked about how the scale factor is three, so the answer is B on this one. Okay, last one. This one looks like I turned my figure two quadrants. So I rotated 180 degrees. So this is a rotation 180 degrees. Our congruence stayed the same. We do not change sizes at all. And then the orientation of the vertices, let's follow it clockwise. I go A, B, C, A, B, C. So in a rotation, the orientation of the vertices stays the same, but the orientation of the figure, the way it is facing changes. Okay, now I'm gonna see if I can identify the rule. So I'm gonna write down A and A prime. So A is at three, negative two. And A prime is at negative three, two. So I didn't change the order, but both of my signs changed. I went from a positive to a negative and then a negative to a positive. So I need one where the order does not change, so I'm gonna eliminate B and D, and I need both of the signs to change, which would be C.